I remember the morning I saw that young couple pulling up to the office. I'm the manager of our local farmer-owned land bank association. I didn't have to be told what Mel and Ann Barber were here for. To those who have farming or ranching in their blood, the desire for land is just something that seems to be bred into them. Well, it's largely a matter of using long-term credit profitably. And that's what their story is all about. Melvin Barber could almost be any young farmer or rancher because his problem was one familiar to young men in every part of the country. Mel, what's the matter? Mel? Something's wrong. Are you gonna tell me? We've lost it, Anne. A third of everything we put together. Just like that. What are you talking about? I'm talking about land. Mr. Carney's son graduates from state this year and his dad's turning this land over to him. All of what we've been renting? He's sorry but his son has decided to farm. And you've already done all the fall plowing. Oh, he'll pay me for that. But you know who'll get the benefit from all the work I've done on the finishing house. At least we rent those two north pieces from your dad. We'll still have that. It's not enough. You still don't get it, do you? What? This. Oh, you mean he won't be renting us this house either? House, sheds, pens, feeders, honey, we just been thrown out at home base. Well, there must be something you can do. Oh, sure. I've got it. I'll hang myself. <laughs> you had me worried. For a minute there, I thought you'd lost your sense of humor. Well, honey, my dad always said, the day you quit laughing, you may as well quit farming. I've still got my chores to do. And I need to think. Starting with some money he had saved in the service, Mel had come along. His tractors and attachments, car, trucks, and other equipment weren't new, but he owned most of them now. He was a good business manager, and in six years, he'd done better than he realized at the moment. But now, Mel was faced with a major decision. He felt he wanted to stay in farming. However, some gloomy alternatives crossed his mind.
I'll tell you for a fact. If we can make it, I'm in farming to stay. But I want some land of my own. Good. Me too. Thinking ahead's half the battle. I've been looking at the books. You know what I think we might manage? I know what we want. That 80 acres, Woodruff owns. Why don't you go over and talk to Harry Woodruff again? Harry Woodruff is an old timer, but he's a capable modern operator. When he gets enough equity built up in one piece of property, he refinances and buys more land to improve his operation. I don't think he ever intends to own all of it free of debt. He pays the land bank the interest and something on the principal. And for his lifetime, he'll get the profit from all the land and facilities he operates. About that 80. Well, what'd you have in mind, Mel? Well, um... Ann and I are gonna have to leave the place where we live now, and we've just been looking for some land of our own. Yeah, well, you know, actually, you caught me at a good time, Mel. I'm so deep in cows that I really have been working my hog set up on that 80 acres the way I should have. Well, I've had three good crop years since we talked about this last. You've got cash? I've saved a couple of thousand. We've put away part of Ann's teaching salary over the years. About 3,000 more. Young man, I'd like to shake the hands of a farmer with 5,000 cash money. I figured to operate on a cash basis this year. Oh, I'd think twice about that, Mel. Let me tell you how I look at it. Say you had this gadget here, and there was a market for peeled apples. Okay? And say you also have $10 cash. Now, you can spend your $10 on apples, sell them for $12, make $2 profit. Now, a man without a plan keeps on doing that year after year. But here's what the long-range planner would do, Mel. He'd borrow enough on this gadget to buy his apples. Time he paid it back, he'd make a little less than $2 because he'd have to pay interest on his short-term loan. But in the meantime, he still has his original $10 cash. So he uses that to get at least another 10 on a long-term loan. And then he takes that 20 and he buys a whole apple tree. Now, let's look down the road a piece. The first man keeps putting up his $10 every year, bidding for apples. The second man is paying a dollar a year on principal and interest and owns all the apples on the tree. Does it work that way with corn and hogs? I tell you, Mel, you figure how you can make your net worth work for you. If you can attract enough capital with it, I'll sell you the house and that 80 acres. Let's go over this net worth once more and see what we left out. Right. Cash value of all the livestock in the yard. Mm hmm. Truck, tractors, rest of the equipment. Okay. Equity in my insurance. Mm hmm. I may have figured that grain on hand a little too high. What about that stored stuff? Grandma's antiques. That's yours. I don't know anything about antiques. Well, I do. Come on, that much? At least. I know when to trample your corn into the ground to get to Grandma's collection. Plus our cash savings. Less what we owe on our operating loan and the car. That leaves us a net worth of $30,200. That's a lot. But it's still nowhere near enough to buy that Woodruff place. No, but this is borrowing power. What we need now is an expert to show us how to use it. Farmers borrow from many sources, including individuals, production credit associations, 
commercial banks, and insurance companies. Mel and Ann came to the Land Bank Association. And for the same reasons, rural residents come through these doors all over America. Wherever farmers, growers, or ranchers operate these days, they're in a business where they have to invest heavily to earn a reasonable profit. And most of them have to get their capital in the form of credit. Not every business has a dependable source of long-term credit, but the farmer does. The land banks are his pipeline to Wall Street. Private investors put their money in land bank bonds, and that money is loaned to full or part-time farmers and ranchers. Our business is serving the man in agriculture. To enable him to obtain credit on reasonable terms, in adequate amounts, when he needs it, and when he can use it profitably. So when a man comes in with good management records, he makes my day. This is all assuming Mel gets another loan on his machinery and livestock. We cooperate with other agricultural lenders. We've hardly touched on the possibilities yet. Uh, Mel, let's list your assets and see what we have to work with. In order to help you repay your intermediate term credit in connection with your new operation, you might be better off to just pay the interest on a land bank loan and put off paying the principal for a while. Another possibility, Mel, might be that if we could invest... So you can see how the pens and storage would fit in with the cropland I'm renting. I'd be feeding practically all my own grain. Well, if what you buy increases the profitability of the whole operation, why, this is the best possible use of credit. I intend to keep on teaching. Well, that's no small matter. Outside income is going to make quite a difference. How long a term could we get? Well, we have considerable flexibility there. Actually, Mel, what we're looking for is a repayment schedule that will fit your anticipated income. What if I have some big years and want to pay this off faster? Well, you can do that. You can pay all or any part of the principal at any time. No penalty. I still think your biggest asset is your ability and experience. Let me go to work on this for you and see what we can do. Since Mr. Woodruff's pens, buildings, and 80 acres would be the security for the loan, I appraised it that day, not just to know its value, but to estimate what it would generate in farm income. Because farm income, plus their outside income, would determine what Mel and Ann could comfortably handle. And I do mean comfortably. Because young people these days don't intend to do without all their lives so they can die owning a farm. They're going to maintain their standard of living same as young people everywhere. Alone, that 80 wouldn't pay for itself. But Mel had figured right. Joined to the row crop land he could lease, it would make him an economical unit and give his family a comfortable home. I had a good feeling we were going to bring some more private capital into this community. And that's what land banks are all about. When you specialize in servicing long-term loans, you have to stay flexible. See farmers through bad times, as well as good. There's Stan Mitchell's place. Stan got in a bind a while back, had too much short-term credit from too many sources. Couldn't meet it all at once. We consolidated his debts into one long-term loan, got his payments down to where he could handle them. Ernest Chomsky. On vacation, I guess. He works in town, but likes living in the country. Has a home and a small place out here. Runs a few cows. Ernie pays his land bank loan mostly from his outside income. That's common, too. John Harris got his land bank loan to build a new home. Fact is, land can be used to finance almost any need a farm or farm family may have. Many young fellows going into farming or any other business need help from their family. That's to be expected. But there are always some, like Mel, who are going to make it no matter what. And right then, from experience, I could predict what eventually did happen. The barbers got their home and the 80 acres. They had another child a year or so later. And as his family grew, so did his farm. 
Mel utilized those pens and buildings to increase his livestock operation. He made improvements on the place knowing he'd reap the benefit from them. And for a while, that was fine. But he wasn't about to stand still. He knew what his dad had built up on land equity, and he'd watched neighbor Woodruff's operation. And in a few years, well, you could see his mind working. Say, Ann, do you realize what this place is worth now? I've got a pretty good idea. That old Jones place is coming up for sale. If we use our equity in this place, you know what I've been thinking? You just might drop in at the Land Bank Association? That's what it's there for. My dad always said, the day you stop growing is the day you start wilting. Now, if we just put our minds...